We have video from space of the rotating spherical Earth. The Earth is round. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Of all the conspiracy theories that litter the internet, the Flat Earth Conspiracy is perhaps the most curious. A fringe society which was founded in the 1950s claims the Earth is a flat disk and that all evidence that it is round, such as pictures taken from space, is an elaborate hoax involving multiple governments. Many scientists have tried to debunk this conspiracy theory with hard facts, but recently Neil deGrasse Tyson took it a step further, shutting down the Flat Earth Theory with his latest response on the Star Talk channel. With no bars held, he let out his outrage, hoping to debunk it once and for all. Well, the actual height of these mountains, if Earth were this size, mm -hmm. would be about the height of the, 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 the depth of your fingerprint. Oh, wow. And that's nothing. That's nothing. Right. That's nothing. And so therefore, what? how much are they lying to you here? The Flat Earth Theory is a belief that challenges the widely accepted understanding of the Earth as a spherical object, instead positing that the Earth is flat. This idea, which has been debunked by centuries of scientific evidence, imagines the Earth as a disc-shaped plane with the North Pole at the center and a massive wall of ice, believed to be Antarctica, surrounding the edges to prevent people from falling off. Flat Earthers often allege that space agencies like NASA are part of a global conspiracy to conceal the truth. Uneducated as opposed to disingenuous. Well, that's the other thing too, because we know that, at least on a large scale, the government has been disingenuous, and they're 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 pushing a narrative, right? So it's it's hard for us. I mean, I'm sure that you've met people too. It's like, look, are you just you haven't looked into it yet, or are you a shill? Are you are you part of a disinformation campaign? They argue that the images of Earth from space are fabricated and that the space programs of various nations are designed to perpetuate the round Earth myth. They believe this boundary wall is protected by NASA employees, so people can never see what is on the other side. Once, a flat Earth conspiracy theorist, Nathan Thompson, approached a man he said was a NASA employee in a Starbucks in 2017 and shouted that he had proof the Earth is flat. He was agitated that NASA was hiding the truth from the public on purpose. Proponents of this theory often rely on observations that they believe support their view despite the fact that established science consistently explains these observations. One of the key arguments made by flat earthers is based on the appearance of the horizon. They claim that the horizon always looks flat, and if the earth were truly spherical, the curvature should be visible to the naked eye. However, scientists explain that the earth's vast size means its curvature is not easily noticeable at ground level or even from relatively low altitudes. The theory also disputes the concept of gravity, with some proponents suggesting that what we perceive as gravitational pull is actually caused by other forces, such as the Earth moving upward at a constant acceleration. Believers claim Earth's gravity is an illusion, and objects do not accelerate downward. Instead, the Earth's disk accelerates upward at 32 feet per second squared, driven up by a mysterious force called dark energy. There is disagreement among flat earthers about whether or not Einstein's theory of relativity allows Earth to accelerate upward indefinitely without the planet eventually surpassing the speed of light. At least, the flat earth believers still hold up Einstein's laws in their alternate version of reality. Despite the overwhelming scientific consensus, extensive photographic and video evidence, and practical demonstrations proving that the Earth is a sphere, the flat Earth theory persists in certain circles, often fueled by distrust in scientific authorities and institutions. No one knows how many flat Earth believers there are, but according to Smithsonian Magazine, membership in the Flat Earth Society once reached 3,500 people. Today, the society claims more than 500 members on the roster. Interestingly, not all believers want to be part of the society. Many believe it has now become a government-controlled body that is actually working against the cause. Believe it or not, Flat Earthers are not a monolithic group. The current president of the Flat Earth Society, Daniel Shenton, is a lunder who now lives in Hong Kong. Robbie Davidson, the guy who organizes the annual Flat Earth International Conferences, is a Canadian who espouses biblical literalism and opposes what he calls scientism. According to a 2017 national poll by Public Policy Polling, 1% of Americans believed the Earth was flat, while an additional 6% weren't sure what was right. This is where it gets even more curious. Flat Earth believers say the Earth is flat but agree that both the Sun and the Moon are spheres. In this model of the solar system, 
The day and night cycle on Earth is explained by suggesting that the sun and moon are spherical objects, each with a diameter of 32 miles, 51 kilometers, moving in circular paths 3,000 miles, 4,828 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Stars, according to this theory, move in a plane located 3,100 miles above the Earth. These celestial bodies function like spotlights, casting light on different parts of the planet during a 24-hour period. Additionally, flat earthers propose the existence of an invisible anti-moon that is responsible for obscuring the moon during lunar eclipses. As ludicrous as all that may sound to someone who denies all conspiracy theories, a lot of people still believe the Earth is flat. Recently, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the renowned astrophysicist, appeared in a YouTube video on the Star Talk channel and debunked the flat Earth theory once and for all. In fact, he can't believe there are still people out there who advocate this theory. The scientist claimed, What is odd is there are people who think Earth is flat but recognize that the Moon is round. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and the Sun are all spheres. But Earth is flat. Something doesn't square. Tyson explained that nature favors spheres, which is why most observable objects in space are round. They might appear flattened at some points, but that's only because another object has landed on them, distorted their shape, or the flat-appearing object is rotating really fast. And it's an, an exploration of how all the laws of physics and the accounting of energy as processes unfold in the universe, how that conspire to make things round. So it favors the sphere. Favors the sphere. The astrophysicist claims that almost everything in the universe is either a sphere or light distortion of a sphere for some other things happening to it. Countering the flat earth theory, Tyson stated, we have video from space of the rotating spherical earth. The earth is round. According to the scientists, the entire controversy is the result of a bad American schooling system and the excess of free speech rights. Schools don't teach children to think critically. So instead of analyzing actual evidence and scientific principles, they look at alternate theories for things that have already been explained. Then there's free speech that allows anyone and everyone to say what they feel. Don't have any education. And then they watch one of these YouTube clips. They start actually believing that this stuff makes sense because it's unchecked. And I would say it's not about whether they've had education. It's about whether the education they had teaches them skepticism of information mm. and teaches them how to inquire. Do you realize it's just as intellectually lazy to believe everything you see as it is to deny everything. And think is right, even if it's wrong. The Flat Earth Society considers itself to be a serious movement, though, as it claims to encourage the spread of ideas and free thought. Since at least 1865, they have put up this statement on their website. Flat Earth theory has grown over the centuries, like a wandering sojourner hungry for truth and eager for discovery. It's changed from the learned conjectures by our ancestors of antiquity to Victorian polymaths like Dr. Samuel Burley Robotham, and it even thrives today in a worldwide grassroots effort of scholarship. As people walked through the ages collecting data and knowledge, the flat earth theory walked with them, growing wise and robust in kind. With so much evidence in front of them, why do some people still believe the earth is flat? There's a reason for that. Flat earth theory stems from a mode of thought called the Zetetic Method. The Zetetic Method is an alternative to the scientific method, developed by a 19th century flat earther, in which sensory observations reign supreme. The method supports empiricism and rationalism and makes logical deductions based on empirical data. In Zetetic astronomy, the perception that Earth is flat leads to the deduction that it must actually be flat. The anti-moon, NASA conspiracy and all the rest are just rationalizations for how that might work in practice. While that may sound elaborately absurd, many supporters genuinely consider it a more plausible model of astronomy than the one found in textbooks. In short, they aren't kidding. So, is there a slightest possibility that the Earth may not be round? The answer lies in the extensive NASA image library, which is chock full of nice, curvy pictures of the globe taken from the International Space Station. But suppose you don't trust NASA, which is understandable after the Apollo moon landing controversy. In that case, you can always check out pictures taken by other space-venturing nations like Russia, Japan, and China. 
it is definitely a stretch of the imagination to assume that all these countries would set aside their political differences to maintain the lie that the Earth is spherical. There are so many experiments, observations, and demonstrations that have, time and time again, revealed the curve of the Earth. And it all starts with the horizon. There's a quick experiment you can do yourself to check whether the Earth is flat or round. Just go to a harbor and watch a ship sailing away. You will notice that as the ship disappears over the horizon, the bottom of the ship will go first, followed gradually by the mast. That's because as objects recede from you, they begin to look smaller and slowly disappear in a very unique way. First, their bottoms become hidden, and then their tops. And Earth's curvature is clearly apparent from high altitudes as Captain Albert Stevens of the U.S. Army Air Corps showed in the 1930s. In December 1930, for example, Stevens snapped a photo looking westward while flying at an altitude of 21,000 feet, 6,400 meters, above Villa Mercedes, Argentina. But if you don't trust your own observations, another way to find the truth is by opening up ancient Greek books. Ancient Hellenistic philosophers figured out the world had to be a globe based on a few observations. The first one was that the stars aren't the same in the northern and southern hemispheres. From opposite ends of the Earth, you are clearly looking out at different quadrants of space. Different stars are visible from different parts of Earth, in two very peculiar ways. First, there is the division between the northern and southern hemispheres. So, you can see Polaris, the star nearly directly above Earth's north geographic pole, quite easily in northern latitudes. But as you travel south, approaching the equator, Polaris sinks lower and lower toward the horizon. Once you've crossed that boundary, you can't see it at all. It's blocked by the curve of Earth in that direction. Similarly, as you travel south, new constellations await your delighted gaze, ones that would be completely obscured by Earth's curve if you stayed up north. The second observation was that Earth's shadow on the Moon's surface during lunar eclipses is curved. In ancient Greece, long before the advent of modern tools, a philosopher named Eratosthenes managed to calculate the approximate circumference of the Earth using just a stick and sunlight. By measuring the angle of a shadow cast by the Sun at the same time, on the same day in two cities a known distance apart, he was able to make a groundbreaking discovery through that shadow. And if you see the shape of Earth's shadow on the moon, it is always round, always round. If Earth were flat, sometimes you get like a- Eratosthenes realized that if the Earth were flat, the sun's rays would hit both locations at the same angle. However, the difference in the angles of the shadows proved that the Earth had to be curved. With this simple observation, he calculated that the planet's circumference was somewhere between 24,000 and 29,000 miles, remarkably close to the actual figure of 24,900 miles. This observation was one of the earliest proofs that we live on a globe. Go to a seashore and figure out why you can't, if you live on the East Coast, figure out why you can't see Spain from the East Coast of North America. Just go, uh, to the middle of the Mississippi River and look south. Why can't you see the Louisiana? Why can't you see New Orleans? Another good example is Foucault's pendulum, the device named after the French physicist Leon Foucault, who died in 1851. Foucault hung a heavy 28-kilogram brass bob from a 67-meter chain in the Pantheon in Paris. Such a pendulum, which can swing in any plane, changes direction during the course of a day, offering clear evidence of the Earth's rotation. Another phenomenon that proves Earth is a spinning globe is the Coriolis force, which acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of a spinning mass. This force it causes Cyclonus to rotate to clockwise in the southern hemisphere and counter clockwise in the northern hemisphere, and it also influences ocean currents through wind patterns. Even long-range military snipers must account for the Coriolis effect's deflection when aiming. Coming back to famous scientists today, Professor Brian Cox has also rejected the idea that the Earth is flat quite hard. Several years ago, he was answering questions from the public about scientific matters when someone asked him about the flat Earth theory. Cox didn't mince his words at all and replied, There is absolutely no basis at all for thinking the world is flat. Nobody in human history, as far as I know, has thought the world was flat. He brought up the Greeks again, claiming they had measured the Earth's radius, leaving very little to the imagination. 
But he didn't stop there. What he said next left zero room for misinterpretation. The very simple fact we've taken pictures of it. I'm lost for words. It's probably the most nonsensical suggestion that a thinking human being could possibly make. It is drivel. Brian Cox is probably the most approachable scientist on the planet today. So picturing him uttering those harsh words may be difficult. But someone had to say it, and Cox rose to the occasion. Is it possible that there is more to the Flat Earth theory than meets the eye? It would be easy to dismiss Flat Earthers as simply being misguided due to a lack of education. While there are indications that those susceptible to such views have low levels of scientific literacy, Landrum at Texas Tech says that Flat Earthers aren't necessarily people who don't believe in science. So it's not really an education issue. It has more to do with distrusting authorities and institutions. It is, is solely designed to change my mind. It is, from its inception, from its discovery, has been a television program, it's been a space program to sell us on something that they've yet to actually show us. Show me a globe spinning with clouds. The Flat Earth Theory, and others like it, seems to be based on a conspiracy mentality and a deeply held belief that resembles religiosity, but isn't necessarily tied to a religion. This conspiracy mentality is linked to science denial and susceptibility to believing deceptive claims on social media. According to experts, the problem is that people with a conspiracy mentality have lost the ability to judge when to trust and when to be skeptical. This lack of trust in authority doesn't end with the government but extends to scientists and even scientific bodies such as NASA, all of whom they believe are part of a massive conspiracy to prevent the flat earth truth from coming out. Conspiracy theorists assume the world is a dark place where everyone, authorities, institutions, and corporations are trying to exploit them. One expert confessed that all the flat earthers he interacted with each believed a selection of conspiracy theories. Some believed the U.S. government controlled the weather, while others claimed that chemtrails from airplanes consist of chemical or biological agents. Although each has a conspiracy of their own, one belief remained consistent. All flat earthers he spoke to believed we never landed on the moon, and no matter how much evidence you show to support the Apollo 11 landing, they claimed it was all fake, including the images of the Earth from the moon. It seems to him that most believers were more invested in the idea of a conspiracy than in providing a workable model of a flat earth. They seem to have a very low standard of evidence for what they want to believe, but an impossibly high standard of evidence for what they don't want to believe. Conclusion, and then they try to cherry pick evidence to support their pre drawn conclusion. They cast away all the bits of evidence that actually is contrary to their beliefs. I, I, but why do people find it easier to believe conspiracy theories than science facts? There's an answer for that too. Most conspiracy theories are fueled by the internet and YouTube videos in particular. If you watch a flat earth YouTube video, you will find multiple arguments in rapid succession, which gives the illusion of fluency. The videos are so compelling that you feel inclined to agree with the script. In fact, the key to these videos' success has been the algorithms that serve them up to viewers of other conspiracy-related content. You start with watching one conspiracy video and end up watching four others. The algorithms facilitate the normalizing of conspiracies and the feeling of a consensus within our community. Through this content, people feel connected to each other, and anyone who has trust issues with authorities and institutions is compelled to believe that they've been fed yet another lie. Believe it or not, YouTube admitted that this was a problem and that it would be changing its algorithm to reduce the recommendation of conspiracy-related videos. However, the platform is still filled with them. The Flat Earth theory might not have been as scary 10 or 20 years ago. Today, if these ideas are not challenged, Supporters of the idea might start running for U.S. school boards to push their theories into the U.S. education system. Experts believe these are infectious, and if you don't push back against them, they will be able to recruit new members. However, given that such conspiracy theories stem from distrust rather than actual physics, it's important to address the real issues. The scientific community should unite and identify the problem of why people are unwilling to accept science as the answer. They need to figure out how they can start building back trust in organizations and institutions. One way to do that is through face-to-face -face engagement, 
and we're not talking about yelling at them on Twitter. Science experts need to start a real conversation where they answer all Flat Earth-related questions with patience, knowledge, and science. Instead of patronizing the believers, scientists need to take their questions seriously, no matter how tedious the process may be. Once they have gained their trust, people will be more open to trusting science as an institution again. Do you agree? Are you a flat earther or do you believe the earth is round? Tell us your opinions on this conspiracy theory and Tyson's response in the comments below. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification icon for more videos.